Hi! Welcome to our first module. This presentation is about the comparative anatomy of the skeletal system. In this presentation, we will only highlight the comparative features of each bone per animal. Note that a good background in basic gross veterinary anatomy is required to understand the terms and morphological descriptions outlined in this presentation. As animals' physique vary, their skeletal framework differs as well. For example, the presence of horn in horned ruminants suggests a bony process unique in their frontal bone. As the bird's body is designed for flight, some of their bones were fused or reduced to lighten their overall weight. As carnivores need to have a very powerful muscles of mastication, deep fossae are present in their mandible to accommodate the bulk of well-developed masticatory muscles. This module will highlight the major comparative features of each structures per animal both for identification purposes and a bit of their physiological function. At the end of this module, you are expected to be able to identify the animal based on the present morphological features of the bones, compare the modifications present in the thoracic and pelvic limbs of different domestic animals, identify the vertebral formula, number of sternal and asternal rib pairs, and number of sternibrae of different domestic animals, and identify the different planktonic bones. The skeletal system can be divided into three parts, axial, appendicular, and splanchnic skeleton. As a review, the axial skeleton includes the bones of the skull, vertebrae, ribs, and sternum. The appendicular skeleton is composed of the bones of the thoracic and pelvic limbs, while the splanchnic skeletons are those bones present in the soft tissues or visceral organs. We will divide this module into five topics. The first topic is on the comparative feature of the bones of the head. The second will be on the other axial skeleton like the vertebrae, ribs, and sternum. The third and fourth topics will be discussing the comparative features of the bones of the thoracic and pelvic limbs respectively, while the last part will shortly discuss the splanchnic bones. Let us begin comparing the skull. As you can see, Morphological variation is very distinct. Different animals have different appearances of the skull. Obviously, the two large skulls are from either a horse or from a large ruminant, and the rest are from a cat, dog, pig, and chicken. This is from a horse, and this is from a polled cattle. From a glance at this point, it will be difficult to identify which is which. On the other hand, this is from a cat, from a dog, and from a pig. And lastly, this is from a chicken. Aside from the size and shape, we can identify the animal based on the anatomical feature of the skull. Let us try to identify the animal based on this anatomical feature on the next slides. To start with, let us identify the unique feature of a dog's skull. The very obvious feature of a dog's skull is the canine teeth as shown here. As you recall from your gross vet anatomy, dog lacks the supraorbital foramen which is supposed to be located at the frontal bone just above the orbit. This supraorbital foramen is present in all domestic animals except in dogs. The orbit is incomplete as shown here and being completed by an orbital ligament in a living animal. The skull of a dog can also be classified based on the proportion of the facial bone and their cranial vault. This process of measuring the points and the boundaries in the skull is called craniometry. Based on this craniometry, dogs can be classified as dolicocephalic, mesatecephalic, or brachycephalic. Dolicocephalic breeds have larger facial compartment and includes the breeds like greyhound, collie, and borzoi. Mesatecephalic or mesocephalic has an average conformation and typically includes beagle, fox terrier, and dachshund. And finally, brachycephalic breeds have shorter facial compartment like in the bulldog and in the pug. 
Now let's move to the horse. This is a skull of a horse. At first, this can be mistaken with a pulled cattle or a cattle without a horn. Let us locate some of the distinguishing features of an equine skull. First is the presence of the facial crest. At the maxilla, you can see a crest extending from the zygomatic bone to the maxilla. Externally, this facial crest is palpable and can be seen at the facial part of the equine head. In contrast with the dog, the orbit of the horse is complete. This complete orbit is present in all large animals like horse and cattle. If we check at the rostral end of the skull, the horse has an upper incisors, in contrast to the large ruminants that lack such structure. Speaking of cattle, we now study the skull of ruminants. This is from a polled cattle, meaning a cattle without horns. Comparatively, the frontal bone forms the roof of the cranium as shown here. This is in contrast with other animals with the frontal and parietal bones forming the roof of the cranial vault. In contrast with the horse, the cattle has a facial tuber in the maxilla instead of a facial crest. This is the facial tuber of a cattle. Like with other bigger animals, the orbit is complete. This is true for both large and small ruminants like sheep and goats. Also, one of the distinct features of a ruminant skull is the cornual process. Note that this is present in horned animals as shown here. Here are the cornual processes extending from the frontal bone. This is being covered by the horn in a living animal. Please also note the absence of upper dental incisors. Ruminants lack this type of teeth and being replaced by a dental pad in a living animal. Next, we move to the skull of a pig. Compared to other skulls, the pig is somewhat shaped like pyramidal and more compact. What is unique in this animal is the presence of osrostri. Here is a picture showing the osrostri of the pig for you to have an idea on its exact location. Because of the rooting behavior of the pig during feeding, an additional bone is present at the most rostral part of the skull, giving support to the snout. Like with large ruminants, the frontal bone forms the roof of the cranium. The orbit is incomplete, and same with the dog, this is completed by the orbital ligament in the living animal. The bones of the birds are pneumatized, meaning they are lined by mucous membrane instead of the bone marrow, and they communicate with the respiratory system, especially the long bones. The skull of the birds has three main parts, the brain case, the bony incomplete orbit, and the beak. The boundaries of individual bones are difficult to identify because the sutures are lost soon after hatching. Other unique features are the presence of scleral bone or ring. Sclerotic rings are a bony structure found surrounding the eyeball of many vertebrates such as fish and birds. This is absent in mammals. Also, birds have a bone called the quadrate bone. Because of this bone, birds differ from mammals in being able to move the upper mandible rather than the lower relative to the cranium. Interestingly, Birds have a single occipital condyle, thus they were able to rotate their head at a certain degree greater than the limited ability of the mammals. Now let us compare the mandible of different animals. Here are the mandibles of dog and pig. One of the distinct features of a dog mandible is the presence of angular process. This process is present in all carnivores including cats. This is a mandible of a cat. Note that this angular process is absent in other animals like pigs as shown here. Other features of a dog mandible is the very deep masseteric fossa. On the other hand, the pig mandible is described to be massive like the skull. It has a very strong and attached mandibular symphysis. The canine teeth are also present and often termed as tusks. One of the features of the mandible of the pig is the leveled coronoid and condyloid processes. 
If you look closely, they are at the same level in contrast to most animals with the coronoid being higher than the condyloid process. Then we compare the mandible of larger animals, this time from a cattle and from a horse. At first, we cannot discern the difference between the two. However, we can use some of these anatomical differences to differentiate the two. Horses has canine teeth in contrast to the ruminant that lacks the said teeth. Next, we compare the condyloid processes. If we look really closely, the condyloid processes of cattle has a concave appearance while it is convex-like in horse. The hide apparatus is located at the intermandibular space and helps to suspend the tongue in place. As we recall, the hyoid apparatus is composed of the stylohyoid, epihyoid, serratohyoid, basihyoid, and the tyrohyoid. In dogs and cats, the bones are cylindrical as shown here. The epihyoid is the longest, and the lingual process is absent. The hyoid apparatus of carnivores articulate with the skull via the mastoid process of the temporal bone. In horses, the stylohyoid is laterally flattened as shown here. Epihyoid is the smallest and fused with the stylohyoid. The basihyoid has a long lingual process. The hyoid apparatus articulates with the skull via the styloid process of the temporal bone in horse. In cattle, the hyoid apparatus is the same with the horse. However, the basihyoid has a short lingual process. It also articulates with the skull via the styloid process of the temporal bone. In pigs, the epihyoid is represented only by a ligament, the ligamentum epihyoidium. Its hyoid apparatus articulates with the skull via the nuchal process of the temporal bone. And that concludes the first part of Module 1. You may now proceed to Part 2 which will compare the remaining bones of the actual skeleton.